Okay, welcome back to another vid. So, picture the scene, it's 1992, a great year. One of the most nostalgic for me. And the Super Nintendo came out that year, or at least it did in PAL regions. I think in the US it came out probably late 91, give or take. And I think it was probably a full year, or there or thereabouts, uh, when it came out in Japan. So, tail end of 1990, which is just ridiculous. And the only possible plausible theory that I've got behind why there used to be such massive delays in between the UK getting something and the US and Japan getting it is because if you think back to the 80s and the very early 90s, the UK was still, and maybe even mid 90s, but certainly early 90s, the UK was still very much dominated by the home computer market. So, you know, we had the, in, in the 80s, up until the early 90s, the Amstrad, the Commodore 64, the Spectrum, and of course the Atari ST and the Amiga. And well before that, we had a stack of other stuff, the Archimedes and the Acorn and whatever else for that matter. And of course, in Japan and America, it was very much dominated by consoles, the NES and then the Super Nintendo and the Master, uh, Master System and the Mega Drive. And maybe some others that I'm missing out, I'm not quite sure. So maybe developers or manufacturers, companies, whoever it was, Maybe they thought the UK and PAL regions in particular were a risk because we were so used to home computers. So maybe they thought, well, let's just test the water and we'll release them in dribs and drabs and see how it takes off. That's the only thing I can think of. Because even at the time with me and my friends, you know, back in the late 80s and the early 90s, we used to be really angry. So it's not even something in hindsight we look back and think, well, that, why didn't we think it was ridiculous? We did think it was ridiculous at the time, you know, that games are coming out a year or more in Japan before they hit UK shows. But it's just the way it was, and you just you just kind of got on with it, didn't you? Because, well, there's, there's nothing you could have done about it, so it's just the way it was. So anyway, 1992, uh, I had my Atari ST by this time, and I, it was my main computer, my main system, and I absolutely loved it. I still had my Amstrad. I didn't really use it, other than the odd game here and there. I still had my GX4000, which, well, less said about that, the better. I mean, I love it. It's a great nostalgic system for me. But, yeah, we all know what happened to that system i.e. not a lot. So uh, I really wanted the Super Nintendo and all my friends were getting one or some of my best friends anyway and we were just desperate to get one but you know I was 13, 14 depending on what month in 1992 and there was no way I was gonna get one. How could I afford 200 quid, 250 quid or whatever it was? It just wasn't gonna happen because I did have pocket money back then but what was that about two pound fifty a week or something? Um, I did have a paper round which I started in late 1990 which I think I'd probably pack that in by the time I got to probably late 91, early 92 at a stretch. So I didn't have the uh, the funds for that or from that. So basically it could either be a birthday, wasn't going to happen. Uh, it was far too extravagant for a birthday present. So it was going to have to be Christmas. So fast forward towards the end of 1992 and it got to that point which I used to religiously do for a good few years and I'd get out like the, the in, uh, index catalog or Argos or K's or uh, Littlewoods or whatever else it was. And I'd circle things I wanted in the catalog or I'd make a list, like I say, uh, of all the things I wanted, whether it's small presents or major presents, whatever it was. And one of them, the main one, was the Super Nintendo. And I was just desperate to get it. And I couldn't wait because it was really frustrating seeing this system in the shop, seeing games reviewed for it every month in magazines and I couldn't have one. It came out just a few months before Christmas, or it came out in April, I think, didn't it? Not that long before Christmas, I guess. Uh, but like I said, I couldn't afford one, so I had to wait. So fast forward, uh, fast forward to Christmas Eve of 1992. By this time, I'd obviously handed in my little list to my parents of what I want and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Christmas Eve night, I'm in bed. It's around about nine or 10 o'clock. I've probably just gone to bed. And my dad's a policeman. And at the time he was doing like night shifts because <clears throat> he was just about to go to work. And I remember him saying, oh, you know, I've got a couple of exciting, uh, not a couple of exciting presents, what am I talking about? A couple of uh, surprises for you in the morning. So that made me excited and I couldn't wait to, you know, to um, to open them and get on with Christmas Christmas Day. I wanted Christmas Eve just to go by really quickly. But of course he couldn't. He never did because you wanted to go to sleep and you couldn't because you were so excited. So anyway, Christmas morning, got up, went downstairs, all the presents are kind of sprawled out everywhere across the sofa, and all that kind of stuff. You had a section for my sister. Um, she's like seven years younger than me, so um, she didn't get too many because she was only very young at the time. And I got I got a lot, obviously, because I'm me. <laughs> and uh, there's two massive 
boxes there, along with a lot of other stuff like the mini presents and the, the stocking fillers and maybe some books that I'd asked for, like things like the Dandy and the Beano and the uh, the Topical Times, if anyone remembers that as a football book, shoot annuals, uh, maybe a football shirt um, or a football. And that used to make me laugh as well. A football would be like wrapped up. <laughs> what else could it possibly be? Oh, it's a head. It's a football, obviously. So you needn't bother wrapping it up. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. But like, my eyes were instantly drawn. There I was, decked out in my pyjamas and all that kind of stuff. Eyes were instantly drawn to uh, two big boxes. And I think this is what my dad was referring to, one of them at least, as a surprise. So I opened up what I thought was a surprise, uh, which was kind of a surprise. It's nothing major, don't get too excited. I'm not going to say something unbelievable here. But what it was was a television, just a mini kind of portable TV, and none of this big bloody plasma stuff that kids these days have. Forget it, it was just a little tiny TV. But it did the job, you know, it's what we all had pretty much in our bedrooms back then. Some of us in our living rooms, you know, because we didn't, uh, a lot of people didn't have the money to, to go out and get big televisions. And um, so it was brilliant. I can't, I think it was a Sony one, I can't swear to that. It may have been a Sanyo, but I think it was Sony. I'd love to track down that model, but I've hardly got any information, just a little bit of memory of what it looked like. And, and I don't know how I'd play around with keywords like that in Google, like television, red button, all that kind of stupidity. I'd never find it unless I was really hardcore about searching for it. So anyway, so I opened up that, that um, present. We took the wrapping off. Brilliant. I was like, oh, great. So now that I've got the television, it must be the Super Nintendo. This big box next to it must be the SNES. And, and it was. I'm not going to keep you uh, under any suspense or in any suspense for any longer. It was a Super Nintendo. Now, here's the thing. At the time, I think that I can remember three packs were out, three different ones. You had the Street Fighter 2 one, which I'm not going to lie, is the one I wanted, but I didn't ask for it. I, I, just, I didn't really care. I just wanted a SNES, but that was my preferred choice. Then you had the Super Mario All-Stars pack, I think it was called. Then you had the Action Pack with the Super Scope. I think that was it. I know there was a Star Wing. Uh, was it Star Fox? What was it in the UK? I can't even remember. Star Wing or Star Fox. And, um, but did that come out after Christmas of 92? I think it may have come out the following year, but I, I could be wrong on that front. But either way, the one I kind of wanted secretly was the Super... Uh, sorry, was the, the Street Fighter 2 pack. Because Street Fighter 2, at the time, was an amazing game. I played it so much at the arcades with my friends. And it's, a, it's one of, if not my most favourite game of all time, my most nostalgic game of all time. I absolutely love it. And so I kind of wanted that, but it, it, it really wasn't that important. So I, I opened it all up, and there was a tiny bit... It came and it went. It was so quick. A tiny bit of disappointment. And I feel bad saying it, because I really wasn't disappointed at all. Apart from that very millisecond, it came and it went. Because it wasn't the Street Fighter 2 pack. And it wasn't the Super Mario All-Stars pack, which, to be honest, I wasn't bothered about anyway. Uh, shock horror. I've never really been into Mario. It's a good game. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I can accept it's a good game. I've played them before. Uh, well, some of them, not all of them. But I'm not that bothered about it. I can take it or leave it. But the one I got was the... Well, in fact, let me not... I won't describe it. I'll show you because I've always... I've always... I've only gone and bloody bought the thing back. I'm so excited. I'm bloody stumbling. It's the Super Nintendo Action... It's not even fitting on the bloody camera. There we are. Super Nintendo Action Pack with the Super Scope from 1992. I'll do the sides, of course. Now, this really is in fantastic... Well, I say fantastic condition. Look at that. But remember this came out in 92. And all things considered, really, apart from a little bit of damage at the side and the top, you see where someone's kind of... Can you see a bit of tape there? But really, it's, it's fantastic condition. And I picked this up on eBay, kind of switching gears quite rapidly here. Picked this up on eBay quite recently, and um, I've been watching this on and off on my eBay watch list for years. Let me put it down for a second. I've been watching it for years, but every time I've ever looked, it's always been really expensive, or the condition has been absolutely terrible. And of course, on top of that, I was really reluctant, big time, to get it shipped over to the States, because you're probably looking at, at the time, I was guessing at like 100 quid or something, and by, by the time you convert 100 quid to dollars, that's about 150, 160 dollars, and I just didn't want to do that, on top of the price of the actual system. So I put it off for absolutely years and years and years, and then the other day, or the other week actually, um, maybe in the other month, because it's been a while since I've made a vid, I saw one on eBay, and it was, and I buy it now price, I think for about 120 quid, and I thought it's a little bit too expensive, but it looks in really good condition, 
Anyway, I sent the seller an email. I said, look, I'm really interested. It's quite pricey. Would you do it for less? And I think I got it uh, for around about £95 in the end, which I was really pleased to get it for. On top of that, I did pay, I think it was 50 quid for shipping. So that's not too bad. 50 quid shipping from the UK to the States, I think, is pretty good. And I'm just really pleased to have it. I'm just going to have to pick it up again. It's going to mean nothing to you, or very little, I guess. Uh, other than that, you know, if you know me, you'll know how much I love the Super Nintendo and how much I love the, the action pack, just because I had it back, as I keep saying, in 1992. And I'm not being funny, lads, but and lasses. Every time I come into this spare room, if you like, a games room, even though there's more records than games, but every time I come into this room and I see this, I'm not joking. Every single time it makes me feel like it's 1992. It is incredible how nostalgia works. And it's just, it's unbelievable. Now, I'm not going to get it out of the box. It's, it's in absolutely fantastic condition. There's no yellow. And this thing is a beast. Just look at the size of it. It's just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to get it out, but it's in brilliant condition. It comes with all the poly inserts and all that kind of stuff. I'm really, really pleased to get it. Now, of course, I had to get a couple of games. Uh, a couple of PAL games. They came from a different seller uh, to the one that I got the system from. But these two games came from the same seller, if you see what I mean. Let's have a quick swig. Now, again, I'm not going to unbox them and show you the cart. You know what Super Nintendo game looks like. But these two are quite expensive. But here's the thing. They're in mint stroke collectors or, or near collectors condition. So you had to pay a bit of a premium to get them. And even then I got them for less than what the seller was, uh, was asking for. I paid 40 quid each. Now, some of you may think that's a lot of money. And it is. I'm not going to lie. But like I say, the condition is absolutely fantastic, so I'm not going to complain because I could have picked these up probably for 20, 25 each and they would have been all creased and battered to ribbons. And why do that? Why spend 20, 25, 30 quid on something which is almost, dare I say, bollocks condition if you can spend an extra 10, 15 quid and get something in fantastic condition? At least that's my attitude. It's that kind of whole thing of quality over quantity again. You know, so, um, so that's that. So anyway, let's show you the first game. And it's, it's obvious, I guess. As soon as I show it, you'll be like, oh, well, yeah, obviously it makes sense now. Street Fighter 2. And again, apologies if there's a bit of glare. It may look as if there's some damage on, on the corner where this flap kind of turns up, but it isn't. It's just, um, it's just the way the box is. Uh, it's in really good condition. Complete, all the rest of it. I'm going to stop showing you the sides because, at least on my screen, it's really light and reflective and you can't really see anything. But anyway, either way, PAL version, of course of Street Fighter 2. Absolutely delighted to have that. And then the other one is a side-scrolling beat-em-up and it's Batman Returns. Again, the condition is just sublime. It's amazing. So 40 quid each, pretty pricey, but really pleased to get them. Help if I put it the right way, even though you still can't really see it. So delighted, delighted to get these. Uh, that brings my PAL total to a mammoth six, <laughs> which is absolutely unbelievable. Now, here's the thing. And this is weird in a way, because as you'll know, as I mentioned in this vid, and you'll, I'm sure be aware of this anyway, uh, I live in America, so it should be common sense for me to buy American SNES games. The reason I don't, as I've touched upon before, is because I'm so nostalgic, I'm so nostalgic towards the PAL Super Nintendo, with these kind of multicoloured spines and all that kind of thing, uh, and the memory, of course, of having them and owning these games, you know, back in the day. That I don't want to get anything else. I, I, you know, I want to buy PAL. I'm fully aware, I'm not an idiot, I'm fully aware that, you know, they run slower than American games, that, you know, they've got the borders. I know that, but I honestly don't care. It never bothered me as a kid. I mean, a good friend of mine who, funnily enough, when I got the action pack Christmas Day 1992, as I've just spent 10 minutes explaining, a good friend of mine got these Street Fighter 2 packs. I was a little bit jealous, but latterly he bought an import um, converter for his snares, and he would import a load of games, including Street Fighter 2, maybe it's a turbo edition by that point, and it did run really fast, faster than the PAL version, but it didn't bother me, I didn't really care, even then, and I don't care now, and I never will, so that's never been an argument for me, I know, you know, Pete, a good friend of mine, Snestastic, he's, he's very um, hardcore about the fact that he always wanted to get, you know, American Super Nintendo games, or Japanese, if you like, because they were faster, and it was a big deal to him as a kid, it really wasn't to me. I, I can't stress how much I genuinely didn't care. And like I say, I don't now and I never will. With that said, with all that said, oh, and by the way, when I say I got the, the Action Pack 92, uh, Christmas 92, and my friend got the Street Fighter 2 pack, it was funny because my other best friend at the time 
or one of my other best friends, he got the Super Mario pack. So three kids who all hung around together all got a SNES and we all got a different one, which is pretty cool. Which meant we could all trade games as well. So, um, but anyway, we'll go back to what I was going to say there. So, yeah, I'm in America and I don't buy too many American Super Nintendo games. Now, I have done before. You should be aware if you've been watching my channel for a long time. I've shown the games, the sides, all that kind of stuff. And then I've done a gameplay vid for Demon's Crest and for Knights of the Round and Realm. That's three I can think of. And um, so, yeah, I have bought them in the past. It's just that PAL is where the nostalgia is. So that's where I'm instantly drawn. With all that said, I'll get to the point. With all that said, make no mistake, PAL is the ultimate goal. Obviously, I bought the system back. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a couple of games. PAL is the way forward, without question, and you will see more of them, well, from now onwards, I guess. Uh, but you may see, at least for a while, more of an emphasis on American snares. And the reason I've decided to do it is because even though I prefer PAL, I just think it's common sense. I'm in America, I can save a lot of money, I don't have to import them, there's no pissing about with converters, step-up transformers and all that kind of stuff, which I do have, but it's just an unnecessary hassle. And it's just so much easier to buy American SNES, so I'm going to start buying more American SNES. I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't living in America, but it just makes sense. So uh, I've bought one game and I'm going to show you what it is. And before I do, I do have, uh, apart from the ones that I've just listed, I do have one other Super Nintendo game, and I've got to show it just in case he's watching. Better be watching. Uh, it's Owen, the boss is 77. And Owen sent me this game. I mean, this must have been about four years ago. Maybe more. <laughs> I'd say at least at least three. At least three, probably four. And, uh, and this is for the American Super NES. Now, I've played it before because I've got an American Super Nintendo. Uh, I've just always preferred... Um, to get my kicks out of um, collecting PAL, I guess. But like I say, now I've got this, I can play it a lot more and enjoy it a lot more. But anyway, the game that I've got, this is $50. It's quite expensive. But once again, following a similar pattern to the other games I've picked up, the condition is absolutely amazing. It's mint, dare I say, collectors. It is the real deal. It's not a repro uh, box, which just really frustrates me. Now, I was watching Dave, Retro Dave Nintendo yesterday do one of his vids about uh, repro boxes and how they frustrate him and how wrong it is really that people kind of, not so much they make them, but how people will pass them off as the real deal when they're clearly not. It's just people are a little bit naughty doing that. But this is the real deal. And that game is Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures. And this is really good. In fact, it's made by the same people, I think, as Super Star Wars. So it's that same kind of side-scrolling, can't even work it out. I'll put it in one of these kind of sentinel boxes side scrolling uh, fighter shooter scrolling thing 2d classic genre game and i absolutely love it. it's a brilliant game the graphics are incredible for a game that came out what 94 95 um it says 89 that's not right oh right <laughs> 1994 i got 81 initially raiders of the lost ark 89 last crusade yeah 1994 so um, you know, quite early, really, in the SNES's life, to a degree, well, at least in the PAL life, I guess, because I guess it came out in 1990, late 1990 in Japan. But still, a brilliant game, really pleased to get it, and it's just weird because I've had this shift in my change of gears in wanting to buy American Super Nintendo ever since buying this console. I don't know why. I think it's because there was always a, a bit of a void missing in my co gaming collecting life, if you like. I always knew I wanted to get this back, and for the last few years I've been desperate to get it, and I don't know, I guess before I had it, maybe it, for some reason it meant that I, I wasn't willing to open the door to anything else, but now I've got it, and I know I've got it, I'm not going to sell it, it makes me think, yeah, I might pick up American games now, I might even pick up the occasional Japanese game, now that's not my intention, but it's kind of, it's almost like lifted a big weight off my shoulders, like I had this like kind of, some kind of anal OCD, um, ridiculous uh, way of thinking where I couldn't get anything else other than PAL. And now I get the PAL system and now, it, like I say, it's like a weight has been lifted and I just feel like I can buy anything. It just feels great. So I'm going to be buying a lot more Super Nintendo American games, but the end goal, the ultimate goal, the collection will always be PAL because that's what I prefer. I just love the multicolored boxes. It's what makes me feel nostalgic. 
and uh, it just gives me that nostalgic buzz that we all get, I guess, from buying old games that we used to have when we were kids. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that there because I've witted on. It's been a very incoherent vid. Uh, you'll have to excuse me for that. And it's my first video for like two months. Bit out of practice. I will get back in shape and physical shape as well. That's diet will start soon. Uh, but in terms of practice for the videos, I will get better. But yeah, I'm just really pleased to get this. Let's do it again. Take up the whole screen. Super Nintendo Action Pack. And like I say, every time I see this, it feels like, literally feels like it's 1992. It's just incredible. So yeah, I guess um, the SNES has always been a part of my channel, a very minor part of it. But really from this point onwards, I guess it's going to become more prevalent. So that's a good thing. Anyway, until my next video, thanks for watching. See you later. This is way too big, seriously. I'm going to sell it now. It's too big. Not really. <laughs>